um, I just wanted to give you some introduction about I will stay here, but I will give you some introduction on uh, what these projects have been doing. And this is uh, where uh, there has been a joint effort basically of not only these 12, but in particular the four uh, twins uh, projects. Um, these projects, uh, the BioNTOP uh, Usable Packaging, Salubiz, uh, and Mandala, have been funded by the same call of the Biobased Industries Joint Technology Initiative, and this is the BBIGU. They all developed in different ways uh, novel alternative solutions uh, to eco design packaging products um, and uh, to avoid incineration of. Yes, packaging and packaging uh, material, and to find a new route for end of life phase of uh, for these packaging projects uh, products. So basically, there has been a rerouting of different uh, materials to uh, get back into the circle of uh, the circular economy and to add value without uh, having a high impact on the environment. So I just wanted to say all these 12 projects is uh, are um, pushing for the bioeconomy and circular economy challenges from a variety of perspectives, but you will hear today several common terms that we used across different projects, maybe also with different meanings, bioplastics, bio-based materials, biodegradation, compostability, recyclability, and offering of uh, end-of-life solutions and options and sustainable packaging solutions. So the goal today is actually to thank also our funding agency, because we're all paying basically our taxes, and these taxes are paying us in the end to do the job. So thank you also to the JU uh, BBI for uh, funding our activities. And this is where I give the floor to Rafael. So yeah, sorry for, for this, but uh, now we can continue because apparently everything is working well now. Um, yes, so I was uh, mentioning that uh, I will present you the results on BioNTOP project, which is uh, close to, to finish. Uh, but first, I, I'm going to, to tell you about the, the, the project and uh, the context in which this project started, right? So uh, the thing is that um, uh, the currently available packaging materials uh, have very good, uh, good properties, right? They are very good uh, because they are low cost, low weight. Uh, versatile, they have uh, very good uh, property, uh, 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 properties, right? But uh, yeah, as we all know, they, they uh, have very uh, a lot of problems, right? Because they, they contribute to the depletion of uh, our non-renewable uh, resources. Uh, normally, to obtain these good preservation properties, you need uh, multi-layer structures, and these are uh, very difficult to, to uh, recycle. And uh, in many cases, the leftover uh, materials uh, or products uh, within the, the packaging make them also difficult to recycle. Uh, and yeah, concerning the, the bio-based uh, plastics, on the other hand, uh, we have the, the polylactic acid, the PLA, which is uh, the most affordable uh, bio-based uh, and biodegradable uh, biopolymer, uh, which is... Um, uh, use uh, nowadays, but uh, its biodegradability uh, is unfortunately not granted in, in every environment. So it's uh, degradable under uh, industrial uh, composting conditions, for example, but not under home compostable conditions. So can we move to this? Thank you very much. And uh, we also have, it works great. Thank you. So um, we also uh, were in a context of deficient plastic uh, uh, packaging end of life uh, because we had uh, a lot of material which were uh, which were uh, either land uh, landfilled or incinerated. Uh, only uh, below one third uh, was uh, is recycled. And uh, additionally, there is insufficient, insufficient uh, collection for organic recycling. And this leads to a uh, high environmental leakage. So apparently it's not working. Yeah, uh, did, did you move it? Okay. <laughs> well, uh, uh, so in this context, as I mentioned, uh, this project uh, started 
This is a, a BBI project, as we, we have mentioned before. Uh, it's a, a research and innovation action. So uh, we started uh, the, the project at TRL three to four, and we are aiming five to six at the, at the end of the project, and we are reaching this, this TRL. Uh, in four years, we are, we are, as I mentioned before, in the very last uh, month of, the, of uh, our project. And, uh, and we have worked during these four years with a, uh, within a, a very nice uh, consortium of uh, 21 partners uh, from uh, different uh, uh, countries here in Europe. Uh, can we move, please, for the next? Thank you. Um, which are the goals of uh, BioNTOP? Uh, so uh, mainly to develop uh, materials for uh, obtaining uh, packaging with different ends of life. And in order to, in order to, uh, to, to reach this goal, we envisioned uh, these uh, demonstrators that you see in the, in the slide. So uh, we have obtained uh, recyclable and home compostable uh, monomaterial trays and fields for fruits and vegetables. vegetables. Uh, we are uh, preparing uh, multi-layer uh, trays and fields for uh, for cheese and uh, healthcare products, personal sorry personal care products. Uh, we have also obtained uh, nets for fruits and, and vegetables, which are bio-based. Uh, we have also uh, uh, we are, we are also obtaining uh, demonstrators uh, that are uh, textiles, coated coat textiles. And in this case, they are uh, tibags uh, and uh, also uh, food wraps. And that's, uh, last but not least, we have also envisioned recyclable and re reusable secondary packaging from uh, secondary raw materials. And so we have obtained extruded brown bags. Can we move to the next one? Thank you very much. Uh, the way to obtain this, these goals, uh, so in order to obtain these goals, we, we have uh, tailored the biodegradation of bio top uh, materials uh, under mild conditions uh, through uh, preparing uh, new copolymers that are bio and are based on, on lactite, on, on, on PLA. We have also used, in order to obtain these materials, uh, we have also used the PLA reactive extrusion, and we have also developed new uh, blends of biopolymers and also biocomposites uh, that uh, fulfill our, our goals and that are all uh, coming from renewable uh, uh, sources. We have also been able to tailor the barrier uh, properties of our materials by fatty acid grafting and uh, whey analginate uh, coatings. And we have also developed uh, PLA coatings for the styles. And we have uh, upscaled uh, different uh, conversion processes per, for obtaining our, our final uh, products, uh, such as uh, melt spinning for obtaining nets, also filaments for textiles and non-wovens. Uh, and also uh, we have uh, studied blown uh, and cast extrusion for obtaining our uh, materials, extrusion, lamination, thermoforming, and recycling. So next slide. So uh, then we have obtained uh, close to 100% uh, uh, biothorts uh, uh, products uh, that have good uh, properties of uh, concerning uh, preservation, uh, due to the, the uh, coatings that we have developed. Uh, they can be processed by uh, standard uh, converters uh, techniques. Uh, as you have uh, seen, uh, we have um, obtained, or we are obtaining also a, different, a, a wide range of uh, different demonstrators. Uh, that uh, also can be able to be uh, uh, their end of life can be uh, either uh, mechanically recycled or also uh, industrially or domestically composted, or even for uh, we have studied even the, the suitability for anaerobic digestion. We have tried uh, for these materials to be cost competitive, sorry. And in, uh, with all this, we, we aim to uh, reduce environmental impact. So next slide, thank you. 
So going for the results uh, at the beginning in the World Package 2, what we did was to, um, to select our materials for obtaining the, the, our uh, demonstrators. We have uh, started by uh, obtaining uh, copolymers based on, on PLA and also other uh, diacids that are bio-based. And we saw that we had to do something uh, in this in this triangle that uh, shows the crystallinity, the molecular weight, and the polarity of the material. So we decided that we have to go in uh, to this uh, best area, green area that you see in the screen, where we have uh, a crystallinity rather low uh, in order to to increase uh, uh, the, the degradation, the biodegradation of our materials. But yeah, this uh, can go uh, on the other side or can, could be a disadvantage uh, concerning the, the mechanical properties. So this crystallinity uh, has not to be too low. The same is true for the uh, molecular weight. It should be intermediate. Uh, because we also will have this, this um, uh, equilibrium between the, the good processability properties and the hydrolysis of the, of the material. So the, if the material has a, molecular, a high molecular weight, it would be uh, better processable and it would be have uh, better uh, mechanical properties, but maybe it's uh, worse regarding biodegradability in mild, in mild conditions. And polarity should be, should be high. Uh, also in order to improve hydrolysis. So yeah, we can move to the next, next slide. And yes, uh, first we obtain these, these copolymers. We uh, observe that these copolymers cannot be used uh, as the main uh, material for our packaging, but uh, we studied also uh, the blending of, uh, of copolymers, of, sorry, of biopolymers, and also the, the obtention of uh, different uh, biocomposites. And we observed that, um, that we could achieve very good uh, um, biodegradability when uh, obtaining the, the right blends of uh, PLA with other bio, uh, biopolymers. Uh, and we have also uh, studied the, the addition of natural uh, additives uh, as fillers and also uh, plasticizers and so on. So uh, in doing all this research, uh, we have uh, obtained our final uh, formulations for all our, our uh, products, our final demonstrators. Can we move to the next slide? Thank you. We have also studied the uh, recyclability of our uh, materials. Uh, first by sorting. So we have studied the, the, um, the materials concerning uh, near infrared spectroscopy and also high spectral imaging. Uh, so we, uh, we were able to uh, see First, to see uh, spectral differences between the PLA substrate compared with other uh, biobase, uh, uh, other biopolymers. Also, uh, we were we were able to identify our new copolymers, and uh, most importantly, uh, we observed that biontop materials uh, have uh, spectral signatures. Uh, that were uh, significantly different from the uh, standard plastic waste. We have also studied the, uh, the behavior of our materials concerning um, the recyclability. We have observed that for our films, we, uh, we could uh, recycle, recycle these materials for uh, even five, five times. But for the case of the tray, that is a biocomposite that uh, includes a natural filler, uh, we observe that the only uh, end of life would be the, the downcycling to, to compost. Can we move to the next slide? Thank you. In work package three, we have also <coughs> studied the, um, uh, the, the uh, coatings, as I mentioned previously. 
And our strategy was to uh, to code our um, our films for tray or, or for for the lead first with whey protein uh, using different uh, plasticizers and additives, and then we uh, perform a fatty acid uh, grafting over this <coughs> this uh, protein layer. In doing so, in doing so, we uh, increase the oxygen permeability. Sorry, we, we decrease the oxygen permeability uh, and also the water vapor permeability, and we increase also water repellency, which would be nice for easy emptying products. Sorry, uh, can you go back? Yeah. It should be, uh, can you click now once, please? <laughs> okay, no problem. So uh, the thing is that we have <clears throat> also developed uh, different um, uh, coatings for for PLA uh, for the styles, and we have do, uh, done so with different uh, methodologies such as uh, PLA yes, exactly. PLA plastisols, PLA emulsions, and, and PLA hot melt. Can we move to the next slide? Thank you. So once we when we have uh, developed our materials, we started to to upscale the processes and also to uh, so in order to obtain our final uh, demonstrators. So first <clears throat> we have uh, upscaled the the our copolymer by reactive extrusion. Then we have also uh, prepared and upscaled uh, all our formulations by compounding in extruders and we obtained our film formula uh, and tree formula for our demonstrators. Then we were able to obtain the, the films for uh, films and trays uh, by uh, industrial uh, extruders. And we are uh, right now uh, adding our coatings in an industrial coater on this on these films and we are having good, good results so far. Can we move to the next slide? Yeah. So with these uh, films, we were able to to obtain uh, our demonstrators. First, uh, the one which was not coated, which was envisioned for um, for fruits, for berries, and we have already uh, demonstrated good uh, property, uh, good. Uh, Result, results as, as packaging. We were able to um, to study, uh, to validate them in a, um, a industrial environment, in a real environment, right? And then <clears throat> uh, we are working uh, on obtaining our coated uh, packaging. So we are uh, actually, uh, uh, in this very moment, uh, adding the the of finishing to add the our coating to our films but we have already some primary preliminary demonstrators that you can see in, in the slide and and uh, yeah uh, we are preparing in the coming weeks this uh six demonstrators these three demonstrators that you see in the slide so two for for cheese products and also one for for wet wipes Then we have also obtained uh, uh, demonstrators that are, are nets for uh, for vegetables. We have uh, pre uh, developed a formulation especially for this for this uh, purpose, and we have obtained we, we have uh, used this formulation in also in, uh, in industrial uh, machines, and we have obtained our um, our uh, 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 nets. That uh, are uh, has has been also um, validated in in uh, in real environment. So we had some problems with the the uh, tenacity of the of the um, um, of the net. So sometimes they 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 break when when handling. And we are studying also now the the biodegradation of this of this net. Yes, next slide. <clears throat> and finally, I show you the, the uh, our demonstrator for for tea bags. So as you saw before, we have also uh, products for 
uh, for textile, and we are uh, we are obtaining this this tiba. So first, <clears throat> we have uh, obtained also materials that are uh, by blending that are uh, also home compostable and that are uh, able to be uh, extruded into into fibers and also to to obtain these uh, <clears throat> these tibas, these products. So blends so with compostability under these uh, compost conditions, and they are processable to, to yarns. And we have also developed an alginate coating as aroma barrier for, for these uh, tibas. So uh, next slide, please. Yeah, so I just want to thank you for your attention. And yeah, you are, you are welcome to ask me any question you have. The questions online. Um, can you tell us more about fatty, fatty acid grafting? Yes, I'm not uh, the expert of the uh, fatty acid grafting, uh, but uh, the thing is that uh, we are using the <clears throat> the functional groups on the protein layer in order to react it with uh, the functional groups of the of the uh, of the fatty acid which is a, a carboxylic acid right and uh, it can react forming a ester functionalities between the hydroxyl groups of the protein and and the uh, fatty acid we normally used uh, we, we normally have used a uh, um, acid chlorides instead of the pure acid for being more reactive and we have obtained uh, very good results concerning uh, the property uh, properties okay so Philippa you can also speak up you can uh, switch on your microphone if you wish um... no th thank you for this answer Rafael and uh, do you know what kind of uh, fatty acid chloride you are using? I don't remember right now. Uh, maybe it's palmitoil. Palmitoil. It's replying. Corinne is going to ask uh, to tell us. Uh, so we tested three different ones: myristoil chloride, uh, palmitoil chloride, and sterile chloride. And for the final formulation, we use the C18 sterile chloride. Okay, and do you do, did you use it with a solvent or solvent free? Uh, we tested both, so we uh, used it in petroleum ether as solvent. Um, this was for the uh, pre-experiments, and then we did an upscaling with a graver printing device. And here uh, we did not use any any solvent, so we directly grafted the surface. Acid okay, thank you. Thank you, Philippe. Thank you, Corina. And there is another question, Sammy. Does PBSA improve home compostability of PLA? Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. We have, we have <laughs> tested it and, and we, we saw that the blended at the right uh, uh, concentration. You, you obtain very good uh, results concerning home compostability. Okay, Sammy, are you happy with the reply? With the reply or um... okay, thank you. Good, good. So I think uh, if there is no other question here and in the room online, then we can move on to Philippe. Okay, so thank you again for inviting us uh, to this event. So I'm Philippe Martinez working at CTP and I'm heading the functional product division. And uh, I was the coordinator of the European Cellulose project. And today we'll talk about the production of uh, all cellulose packaging, fully recyclable and biodegradable uh, using two combined processes. So we'll talk about MFC wet lamination and then chromatogenic grafting 
And uh, you will see that it's really close to what was done in this project regarding the, the, the grafting uh, of fatty acid. So a, a short introduction. So as you all know, uh, the packaging material market is undergoing a major turn in its history. And uh, we have a huge increase of plastic production and uh, only part of this uh, plastic is recycled. And uh, for sure, food packaging industry is now looking for some alternative to petrol-based products, which are bio-based, biodegradable, recyclable, and that will bring the, the same, let's say, barrier properties that can be obtained with plastic, such as barrier to grease, oxygen, water, water vapor, and so on, but also preserving the other packaging function, uh, such as uh, converting ability, printability, and so on. And uh, there is really a need to develop high barrier bio-based packaging. So uh, cellulosic materials such as paper and board can be a solution because uh, cellulose is bio-based, is biodegradable and recyclable. And uh, cellulose is really abundant on earth, but for sure it's hydrophilic materials. So the barrier properties should really be improved uh, in terms of barrier to grease and water. So at CTP, we have developed during the last years so different processes uh, to produce this new biomaterial, starting from the paper or board and cellulosic product. So we will have a look later on, on the two uh, technologies. So the first one is MFC wet lamination. And here the idea is to develop barrier properties to grease and oxygen. And then the second technology, which is chromatographing, is to develop barrier properties to water and water vapor. And the idea of the Cellulose European project was to combine the, these two processes to develop a, a full cellulosic packaging material with good barrier properties. So a few words about the objective of the Cellulose project. So it was to develop these two technologies and to be com competitive with the current plastic-based materials in terms of barrier performances. But also, uh, we evaluate the end of life, so being recyclable and biodegradable. So recycled in paper string and biodegradable either in compost medium, but also we uh, assess the biodegradability in marine environment. And then the, so one of the last objectives was to develop pilot scale machine. So we start in the beginning of the project, the first uh, pilot uh, for MFC wet lamination. And the idea was to develop this pilot from TRF three to five. So being able to produce uh, reels at the end of the project. And the second point was to optimize the chromatogenic grafting of MFC layer at pilot scale. Okay. So these two technologies uh, preserve recyclability and biodegradability, and the idea was to bring first to put an MFC layer on the top of a paper or a ball uh, to bring the grease oxygen uh, barrier and oxygen and contaminant barrier, and then to uh, use chromatogenic grafting to protect this MFC layer from moisture and water, since uh, MFC is for sure uh, coming from cellulose, so it's hydrophilic and uh, to bring water and water vapor barrier using this graft grafted fatty acid layer. So in the framework of this project, the idea was also to develop three proof of concepts and uh, with increasingly demanding requirements. So we produce clamshells, cups, and trays. And as you can see, uh, when for trays, for example, the performances, uh, the required performances are, are much higher compared to clamshell. So a few words about the technology. So first, the MFC wet lamination. So microfibrillated cellulose film, they give excellent barrier to grease, contaminant, and oxygen. So it's a biodegradable, bio-based, and recyclable uh, material. But these films are very brittle, and the MFC cost is really high. So the idea uh, uh, was to use the paper or the board for the mechanical resistance and the low cost and then to be able to apply this uh, microfibrillate cellulose on the top of this paper uh, to bring the barrier properties. Thanks to that, we will be able to have a 100% cellulosic material that are recyclable and biodegradable. But then how to apply uh, this uh, microfibrillate cellulose? Since, as you know, it's in the, uh, uh, it's a gel at a very low solid content, uh, something close to 2%. 
So it's almost impossible to apply it with coating or with coating you will apply a very, very low amount of MFC and you need to uh, have several passes such as uh, five to 10 passes to obtain something to give uh, barrier properties. So that's why we have developed a new process called MFC wet lamination. So the idea is to have, uh, it's really close to what can be done uh, on a paper machine. So the idea is to have a, a MFC suspension, and then uh, it goes here and we fill, we under filtration. And the idea was to have an MFC wet uh, film with a, a solid content between five to 18. Let's say uh, the target in the project was to have something close to 10. And then it's dry enough to be viewed as a solid uh, like self-standing materials. And that, that can be picked up. And uh, then here we have a paper reel or board reel, and we will uh, have, uh, we'll put the MFC film on the top of this uh, reel, and then we will dry it at the end to have MFC stratified paper without any view. Okay. Uh, at CTP and the framework of the project, the idea was to first work at lab scale and then to go to the pilot scale equipment. So we are equipped at lab scale to be able to produce this MFC wet lamination on paper or board. So we can test different grade of MFC, different grade of paper or boards, uh, different uh, coat weight and so on. And then uh, now we, since uh, uh, 2019, we are equipped with uh, this uh, pilot scale equipment. So the width is around 30 centimeter and we can apply MFC coat weight between 10 to 50, but let's say usually it's between uh, uh, 10 to 25. And uh, the speed, still, oh, sorry, here the speed is still uh, quite low. It's between one to ten. It's let's say the, the first uh, pilot in the world. So we are working also now on how to increase the, or to speed up this uh, machine. And uh, okay. Now a few words about the chromatogeny. So chromatogeny was also developed and patented at CTP. So it's a breakthrough green chemistry process that brings hydrophobicity to hydrophilic reactive substrates. So as soon as you have hydroxyl group, it will react. Uh, so it can work with linear cellulosic fibers, papers, polyvinyl alcohol, minerals, textile, and so on. So it's a solvent-free technology. So it means we apply the reagent at 100% and it's suitable for real-to-real -real process, since in fact, it's a chemical reaction that uh, reacts within one second more or less. And uh, the first development was done in the paper industry, but it can also work, for example, on textile or wood. And uh, when applying it to paper and boards, it will bring the water resistance and keeping converting ability, such as uh, gluing, but also printability. And also it will keep the recyclability and the biodiversity. And we can apply it to coated paper. And here we think about, for example, PVOH, polyvinyl alcohol coated paper. Uh, that has excellent barrier to breathe oxygen, but then that is really sensitive to water. And here it will protect this water sensitive barrier layers from water and moisture, keeping also here recyclability and biodiversity. Okay, so how it works? Uh, we use uh, the reaction of fatty acid chloride, and at CTP we are using uh, palmite oil and sterile chloride, so C16 or C18. Uh, and then you will create, create a covalent bonding, so an ester bond, and uh, the byproduct will be HCl, but it's uh, really, uh, it's around 10% compared to the amount of uh, reagent deposited, so it's a low amount, and at CTP, so we are equipped with a pilot, so we can run up to uh, 400 meters per minute, and we apply it uh, thanks to an engraved cylinder, and we are applying 0.2 to 0.5 gram per square meter. So it's a really low amount. And thanks to that, we can still uh, get excellent uh, barrier, uh, water and water vapor barrier properties. So we apply it here, and then we develop the reaction on an eating cylinder. So the eating cylinder is a Philippe, Philippe, I... Philippe, we lost you. So as you can see here, we'll propagate then the reaction by diffusion. 
And that's really also a good point. Uh, yeah. Um, this is Chiara speaking. Um, could you please uh, go back? We, we lost the signal for a couple of minutes. Uh, so okay. I think we were at the first bullet point. You said applied at pilot, uh, same slide. Okay. Yeah. yeah, if you could take it from there. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, sorry, it's written Thank you. something wrong with my internet, but okay. So uh, I was saying it's a three steps uh, process. So the first one is to apply the reagent. So we apply it with an it, uh, with an engraved cylinder. So we are applying 0.2 to 0.5 gram per square meter. So let's say it's it's 10 to 20 times uh, uh, less than what can be done when you we applied a water-based barrier coating uh, on the paper. And then we develop the reaction on the heating cylinder. So in fact, the paper with the reagent is in direct contact with the heating cylinder and the, react, the, react, the vapor will react within a couple of seconds. So it's between one to four seconds. So it means that we can run, run up to 800 meters per minute. And uh, today there are three machines running in the world, two in South Korea and uh, one in um, Europe uh, that is working uh, with the same process that is used at, at CTP. And as you can see later on, we will propagate the reaction by diffusion and we'll form, we will form a ester bond between fatty acid and cellulose with a continuous withdrawal of the HCl. So it means that it's not applying, let's say, a film on the top. We will uh, diffuse in the on the top, but also in the thickness of the paper. So it means even if you scratch or remove some fibers, then you will keep the water barrier properties. Okay. So the aim of this presentation was also to focus on the last part of the project, which was the production of the proof of concept at pilot scale. So after lots of work uh, performed in the framework of this project at uh, first lab scale and then pilot scale on the MFC wet lamination, we were then able to produce a reels of uh, wet laminated uh, board uh, with uh, a very homogeneous, uh, let's say, uh, barrier properties. So we run, as you can see, we run at low speed, so of three to four meters per minute. Now we can go up to 10. And we are thinking about how to increase more this speed. And uh, we are applying 15 to 25 GSM of MFC on the top. Then, uh, thanks to that, we, are, uh, we have the possibility to uh, produce up to 80 kilograms per day of this uh, uh, MFC wet laminated board. Then uh, we graft, let's say, with chromatogeny, this MFC wet laminated board. So here the speed was 50 meters per minute. We used the uh, palmitol chloride and we graft it two times. And uh, in fact, in the framework of this project, we, we work on how to being able to increase the grafting density because MFC is a really dense material. And it's not that easy to graft this material compared to, let's say, standard conventional paper or board or polyenic alcohol. And thanks to that, here we are able to produce up to 500 uh, kilograms per day of, uh, let's say, wet laminated plus chromatogeny uh, board. So then we produce, uh, let's say, reels for these uh, three proof of concepts. So for cups, we use uh, uh, 195 GSM board. We apply 20 GSM of MFC, and then we graft uh, two times on the MFC side to protect the, let's say, inside of the cup. And then one time on the reverse side when we graft, in fact, the board uh, for, uh, let's say, a cold liquid. Then for the clamshell, uh, we use uh, MFC, also 20 GSM, and then we graft it two times on the MFC side. And for the trays, uh, we use 25 GSM of MFC, and then we graft it two times on the MFC side, but also one time on the reverse side, so on the board, also to protect uh, any condensation. So here you can see the results. So the target, uh, we were looking for a grease barrier, so kit test, uh, then water absorption, uh, water vapor transition rate, and oxygen transition rate. So for the clamshell, uh, the requirement was to have a kit test between uh, up to uh, between 10 to 12, 12 is the maximum, and the curb one minute below uh, 20. So we succeed uh, with that. So it means that with this, uh, these um, barrier properties are really good for the clamshell. Then for the cups, in fact, we need a cup, cup 10 minutes below 10 and WBTR uh, below 50. So in standard condition. 
And here you can see that the WBTR is really good. But in terms of, let's say, uh, water absorption, in fact, the target, we were not able to reach this uh, target since we were not able to graft uh, a huge amount of uh, fatty acid chloride, at least at pilot scale. At lab scale, it works uh, very well. But even if we did not, did not uh, succeed uh, regarding this, uh, these targets, we produce these uh, cups and we put uh, coffee, uh, uh, coke, water, and so on. And we do not see any leak when putting this uh, all the, the let's say the, the liquids inside the cups. And the last one was to produce trays. And uh, here uh, we almost uh, succeed regarding the WHR and OTR. We, we were a little bit ahead, but here again there is still a need to increase the, the grating density to to have better uh, water barrier. The good point is that we were able uh, to produce up to 100 uh, proof of concept of each. So 100 trays were produced by Storenzo, so uh, very famous uh, Swedish uh, paper makers. Then the cups were produced by CTP and the clamshell were produced by Itani. You can see here that they, they look really good. So regarding the challenges for the converting, uh, for sure, uh, uh, MFC layer is quite brittle, and we can have a lack of sealability of MFC layer. So we use uh, ultrasonic uh, sealing, and we put a small amount of sealing agents uh, to, to be able to have these cups. And uh, we, the, there is also one challenge regarding the bottom and the body formation. Then regarding the trays, these trays were thermopressed. And uh, uh, in fact, to limit cracks, we increased the moisture content before uh, uh, Temo pressed the, the, the paper, the board. But it was uh, not enough for the corners and the rim. Otherwise, on the on the bottom, it, the, the, the barrier was were excellent. And then for the clamshell, uh, we preconditioned the, the samples. And then we cut, fold, and glue it without any issues. And then the barrier properties were satisfied all the required key performance in case. So then a few words about the end of life. So we performed trials on an MFC wet laminated board with 25 GSM of MFC grafted four times. And then we evaluate the recyclability. So it was really good. Here you can see a paper sheet uh, done after recyclability trials. And then we evaluate the biodegradability, disintegrability, and compost quality. And everything was really good. And uh, also, ITNA work on the marine biodiversity, and we perform uh, that. And we found that uh, these uh, materials are also biodegradable in marine condition. So, to conclude on this project, uh, we were the MSC wet lamination allows now to assemble a thin layer of MSC on the board without the glue. And we can obtain excellent uh, grease barrier and oxygen barrier to, to board. Uh, the combination of that with chromatogenic grafting will bring additional barriers such as water and water vapor barrier. And uh, we produce uh, materials at pilot scale. So it was the first time that we produce uh, reels with uh, using MSC wet lamination. And it was done for the production of the, of the proof of concept. And uh, it was already satisfying the performances required for the clamshell application. And there is an uh, ongoing improvement to achieve target performance for cups and trays. And we are able also to produce uh, 100 uh, proof of concept that are recyclable and biodegradable. So I would like to thank you for your attention. And if you have any question, do not hesitate to ask to me right now, or you can also send me an email. Questions from the room? I thought you had many questions. Yeah. Thanks a lot for this very interesting uh, talk. I have a lot of questions. Maybe I get back to you via email, but uh, maybe a few questions here. Yeah. Um, did you do the grafting always on in two dimensions, so always on a film, or did you do for for these uh, the, the trays? Did you graft them on a three D? Yeah, uh, in fact, here in this framework, on the framework of this project, the idea was to 
to produce reels. So we graphed only reels. So the trays were, were done, were thermo pressed. So first we graphed and then we thermo pressed the, the grafted uh, materials. But also at CTP, we are equipped uh, with a spray. And we are uh, today for sure developing also chromatogeny applied to uh, molded cellulose or so 3D objects already formed uh, to be able to apply chromatogeny, direct, chromatogeny directly on, on uh, 3D objects. And um, did you do tests if labels still stick to the surface of the grafted side? Yeah. Uh, in fact, some labels are working well and other are not. So, but it's the same uh, situation with glue. In fact, when we try to 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 glue, for example, for for the clamshell, uh, we need to apply some certain glue to produce this clamshell, and we have worked on that, and we have found some some glues that are working uh, very well with uh, these uh, grafted uh, materials, and some other are not working at all. <laughs> okay, I'm Andrea Lanza, University of Pisa. I have uh, two questions. Uh, one, um, I've seen this the technology requires uh, several steps, and uh, I would like to know if uh, you already had an estimation of the cost uh, of the process because, uh, yeah, so uh, microcellulose uh, is quite uh, expensive. And uh, this, and the second question is uh, um, taking into account uh, the environmental cost of producing cellulose and microcellulose. Uh, have you estimated the life cycle assessment in comparison with other solution like uh, the use of bioplastics, for example? Yeah, uh, thank you for those questions. So. Um uh i would say uh in for sure it's uh let's say two steps but uh, today when we when we let's say we would like to develop uh packaging materials without let's say plastics with a board in fact usually you can find some water-based barrier coating that is applied on the top of paper or board but usually it will bring either uh, grease and oxygen barrier or water and water vapor it's almost impossible to find uh, let's say something that will bring all so at we so paper makers are used to have a, let's say a double layer or two processes and then uh, regarding the let's say the cost uh, regarding chromatogeny for sure as i said we apply a very low amount of reagent which is and the reagent is not uh, that expensive so it's quite cheap and for the wet lamination uh, today let's say it's hard to say because we are we are running at a very low speed but we tr we try to we do at in the framework of this project uh, LCC so life cycle uh, life cost and uh, LCA and LCC and regarding the LCC we have found that the, the price uh, will not be will not be uh, that uh, high compared to uh, what is the current situation with a board uh, coated uh, or laminated with a PE and regarding uh, LCA we have found that. Uh, uh, results are really good. We can uh, reduce the carbon footprint by, uh, I think, about uh, forty percent compared to the the, the current uh, the current materials developed uh, uh, with a uh, uh, board plus uh, plastic. Okay, I don't see. I see uh, Andrea nodding, so that's fine. Thank you. <laughs> and I don't see any other question here in the room. Um, I don't see other questions online either. Um, so I would rather request back uh, the host role from you. Oh, yes, let me check one second. Okay, well, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> and thanks for, for inviting me and the, and the Project Mandala to, to this event. Um, I'm Marta Redrado. I'm the coordinator of Mandala, a project that is also almost finished. We are in our last few weeks, so we are busy, busy, busy trying to 
uh, finalize everything. Um, I'm afraid I tried to get the scientific coordinator uh, with us today to maybe answer more technical questions, but I'm afraid his diary couldn't do it. So um, I'll try to answer your questions, but if they are really technical, I'll have to forward them to, to our scientific coordinator, okay? Um, this is just the content of the presentation today. I won't go through it. Um, ITIP is the coordinator of this uh, project, and I just wanted very briefly to introduce you. We are in Spain, in Zaragoza, and we try to, we are a technological center, and we try to help companies to overcome those challenges they might have with uh, our research and uh, the trials that they can perform the trials before becoming to the market. We started uh, already a few years ago, and we started as a spin-off of the university. And then slowly, slowly, we, we, we grew until today that we are about 120 people. We just uh, opened a new innovation hub in 2021, increasing uh, our facilities. We've got four spin-offs, uh, about 200 customers between SMEs, RTOs, and, and large industry. And all in all, we've uh, collaborated in more than 250 uh, projects, R&D projects, and uh, uh, 70 of them have been coordinated uh, by IT. And one of those, as I mentioned, is Mandala. Mandala is 48 months project. Uh, and as I said, it's finishing today. Uh, today, sorry, not this month. And uh, we, have, uh, we have a budget of about 4.5 million uh, euros. Uh, we are 11 partners from five uh, different European countries with uh, complementary competencies. We have seven uh, industrial partners, one uh, food industry cluster, and four uh, research partners. To understand Mandala, uh, it's necessary to know the current situation in the world, as uh, you all probably already know. But I'll just briefly summarize that uh, plastic is, is a major a recycling challenge. Uh, only 40% of the plastic is recycled with 72% uh, simply not recovered at all. Selecting the right packaging helps minimize the environmental footprint of the product. So packaging can play an important role in the manufacture of uh, more sustainable uh, products. So, what we try to, to do in Mandala is to find a solution uh, which carries out a sustainable use of uh, raw materials, uh, which substitute uh, all based materials with bio-based bio, bio, bio -based material ones, um, also including an inefficiency, efficient recovery and separation of the materials, and finally, finding um, a reuse and recycling strategy. In order to achieve that, in Mandala, we've worked in three main areas. The eco design, the first one, a multi layer monomaterial packaging with functionalities compared to the multi material ones, and fully produced with bio based and recycled polymers. Developing dual functionalities in the adhesives, on one side, easy to split, and in the other one, enhance the, the barrier properties to solve the end of life problem. What we've done, um, we've developed these new adhesives by incorporating uh, thermoreversible covalent band bonds and radiation absorbing nanoparticles, which at the same time will generate uh, a, a tortuous path enhancing barrier properties that are critical for the end user. In addition, new polymer blends with increased bio base and recycled content of films have been developed. It's also important to demonstrate the valorization of the recovered materials and assess the best end of life, uh, end of life routes. Uh, with the delamination technology, uh, we, what we've done is to prove that it can be upscaled and apply uh, to the intermediate solutions for multi-layer, multi-material packaging, being bio-based or not. Let me see if it, this is a heavy slide, so I think it takes a little bit to load. Here it is. I'll just load it all. Um, so this is the general overview of the project. Uh, the main steps to achieve the, the objectives that I just mentioned before. So from commercial materials and adhesives, what we did is two things at the same time. 
On one hand, we develop uh, the functional adhesive with the thermoreversible properties. And on the other hand, we develop polymer film matrices with a high content of bio-based and recycled uh, materials. Once we had uh, the polymer films and the adhesive, uh, they were laminated together, tested, and then they were delaminated. After the delamination, the polymers uh, were recycled and uh, used again, okay? Um, when we did this at first at lab scale, and the next step we did is uh, to upscale it and validate the final products uh, with, uh, with novel materials in the food and the cosmetic industry to then study their economic and life cycle assessment. This is a selection of some of the, the packaging that was used, the one the top, uh, the bottom left, the, the aluminum one for um, creams or vitamins, that one, it was not done in the end, but the rest have been, um, have been uh, tested or are being tested at the moment, actually, with the, the last uh, results. So uh, what we try to do with Mandala is uh, decrease the use of virgin and fossil-based fossil materials by 40%. Uh, always following the, the guidelines and the customer protective the directives. And also we try to contribute to new ones. And of course, we follow all the, fabri all the fabrication processes uh, are in agreement with the, with the corresponding um, standards. To summarize a little bit more in detail what, what we've achieved uh, so far, we created, as I said, new bioplastic formulations. Uh, the dual uh, functionality adhesive has been achieved and actually it's been filed for, uh, uh, the patent application has been filed and we are waiting um, to get more uh, information back. And the, the, the lamination and barrier tests are being carried, are being finalized at the moment. Um, the new, uh, bioplastic formulations, uh, they had to have, uh, by definition, in the grant agreement, at least 85% of bio-based or uh, end of recycled content. So, um, because we did um, two film uh, structure, we did uh, PLA with 10% uh, nanoclay and uh, recycled MI3, which is a product uh, by BioMe. Uh, Bio-LDPE with recycled Bio-LDPE, a PET blend, and um, the recycled LDP. And also we tested, but only a lab scale level is the PF with uh, our uh, LDP, LDP. This is some of the barrier properties that our partner Nordner has measured. And uh, summarizing, uh, we saw that the nanoclay improves the oxygen uh, transmission and the water vapor transmission, uh, mainly in the PA, PLA, sorry. And the mixed uh, PET, which was a, a blend of 75% uh, recycled PET and 25% virgin PET, um, the barrier properties are better than the virgin PET. Regarding uh, this uh, thermoreversible um, adhesive, um, Mandala is based on, on a really like it's simple strategy. That, uh, that consists of adding a third component to the chemical structure of the commercial adhesive. And this component is a new diode synthesized using the well-known Diels-Alder chemistry. This inserts, uh, uh, this inserts uh, thermoreversible bonds into the network. And these bonds can be broken by heating, as it can be seen here. It's a bit of a messy slide. Um, so the the polyurethane chains break uh, and then it drastically changed the properties of the adhesive. Um, and we went a little bit further and what we proposed is to um, incorporate nanoparticles in the adhesive, uh, in the adhesive film. And so these particles are capable of absorbing the infrared radiation and heating up rapidly. Uh, this has two main advantages, which are the, the rapid heat transfer to the, to the adhesive, which uh, causes thermoreversible bonds to open in just a few seconds, and then the possibility of remote heating with infrared, infrared radiation. Regarding the, the delamination, 
uh, um, this is a summary of the, the lamination tests uh, carried out with conventional adhesive and with the adhesive with the, with the innovation included in, in Mandala. The delamination of the, uh, in, I mean, here you can see very specific, uh, uh, we talk about the structures, uh, structure four, which is the PLA with uh, the nanoclay and RMI3. What happened is that the PLA reacts with, our, with the solution of the, of the reactor for the delamination and it dissolves. So only RMI3 could be recovered. Um, the test in general, the test with uh, DAF adhesive uh, gives better Marta, results. Marta, just yes. wait a second. Um, I lost you one second on the screen. Now you're back, but perfect. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Yes, go back. Okay. So the, in general, the test with, um, with the DAF adhesive from the project give better results uh, since the, the delamination could be achieved in all the samples, and um, which it didn't happen with the, just the commercial adhesive. Um, with the PF structure, uh, it was a really high rate of the recovery. It was 90% uh, of the delamination was achieved. So that's uh, really good uh, results. So the conclusions and a little bit of looking into the future. So after analyzing um, the results and, and waiting for the last, last uh, conclusions, we can say that uh, we achieved a two to 5%, depending on the, on the structure uh, of reduction of the CO2 emissions, 35% um, of reduction of the fossil-based uh, uh, fossil uh, source, 85% reduction of atmospheric uh, harm. Oh, sorry, sorry, my screen. Went a bit crazy. Something. Um, 55% 50, uh, 50 reduction of the of the residues management costs. Um, it's true that there's an increase in price. It can go from two to fifty percent increase in price. And um, if we want to to install this uh, delamination technology, about uh, one point five uh, million euros is required and to install it and about uh, 12 months time to have it all up and running. Um, I have to say that uh, in some structures, we got the uh, okay uh, compost in industrial, domestic, soil, marine, and water. Um, and uh, Arca is uh, finalizing also this, um, this analysis. So looking a bit into the future, uh, and, and finalizing and summarizing a little bit this whole presentation. Uh, with Mandala, what we try is, uh, is not only to develop a new type of uh, multi-layer packaging, uh, but also demonstrate that the delamination technology can be upscaled at pilot level, and uh, it can be applied to recover all types of fractions, providing clean streams of materials for the biodegradation or recycling, um, also, uh, novel strategies to separate and recover multi-materials, uh, multi-layer materials. Uh, we think this is the way, or, or, or it starts the way to increase the recycling rate of, of the strategic uh, European sectors. And the idea is that this application, these this delamination strategies uh, can be validated also in other sectors and not just in the food and the cosmetic that is the one that that we tried, um, that we tested uh, within Mandala project. And that's all from me. So if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer if I can. And if not, uh, I'll take notes and, and forward them to my colleagues. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Marta. I'm checking uh, if somebody is typing something in the chat. No, but you get good job from Philippe. <laughs> so it's a pat on your shoulder. Is there any question here from the room? Let you think in it. So you're saying, Mata, I have a question to you. Um, yes. This is like from a different perspective. I was, I was wondering, like all these kind of uh, estimates about price uh, and uh, increase and so on. How much do mm -hmm. you think this is affecting the way the product will be used in the end? Well, we had a feeling. Sorry. Yeah. 
Do you have a feeling about this or an estimate? Or a... Yeah, we, we talked to some of our stakeholders with those numbers on the table and, and we asked them what their, their feeling is. And we also asked customers. So in the end, you see the companies being quite happy like to overtake this. But um, they say that it, it all really depends on the customers because it's true that the price increase is a big challenge, especially how the market is at the moment, that everything is increasing, like resources and electricity, everything. So they are like the, the, the producers, let's say, they are scared of overtaking this because it's a risk that is not clear customers will be happy to pay that extra bit. You can see still not a big, it's let's say half and half of the, of the society, or at least the, the, the one that we tested, are happy to pay more for a more sustainable packaging, but the other half is still like not quite happy about that. So that makes companies not sure about how good this is, even if they know that this is the right way to go. I understand the point, but I think this is like a common uh, challenge for all these projects that were approved under the same call. Also, yeah, facing the times that we are living now. I was wondering, yeah. you were mentioning like the dialogue also with stakeholders and consumers. Did you use any survey for, uh, or uh, what kind of tools do you use for inquiring about their estimates? Yeah, and... one, of, one of our partners, the Tic Tita, which are um, uh, food and food packaging uh, producer, um, they count with a um, with a platform that they use for for their company to ask custom uh, consumers about different things. So we use that platform for the consumers, and then for the stakeholders, um, we did a couple of meetings, but of course not all of them could be there. So then we send them a survey that they all could uh, reply. So we gather all the information and sum it up. Thank you, Marta. Very interesting. No other questions from the room? No, so I think uh, I will uh, get the host role back from you and um, we can go to the next speaker. Thank you so much, Marta, for uh, Thank you. your intervention. Wait a second, I get you. So I'm going to present the PolyBioSkin project. Um, I am affiliated in the National Interuniversity Consortium of Material Science and Technology. It is an Italian uh, uh, consortium that regroups several universities because we participated at this project together with a unit from Naples dedicated to in vitro test on two cells. Uh, but uh, regarding the University of Pisa, at which I belong, uh, the group that participated to this project was the Multifunctional Bioeco-Compatible Materials Lab, led by Professor Andrea Lazzari here present today. Um, and so uh, we would uh, participate to this uh, project with the role of responsible for the selection of materials and with the um, te technical management of the project that was coordinated by Iris Technology Barcelona. Uh, so next, please. Um, the idea was replacing fossil-based materials with uh, renewable and biodegradable ones uh, because uh, we, we need to do it also to grant, uh, as uh, explained very well in the previous presentations, to grant other alternative methodologies for end-of-life management, including composting, that since 2017 was uh, considered uh, similar, uh, equal to recycling. Um, so go, go on, please. Um, and uh, so it was called organic recycling. It was defined like this. But uh, next, please. Mm. Fossil plastic should be replaced because after uh, recycling, if it is possible, we saw that it is not so uh, common in, uh, in the Mandala project presentation. Um, we go to incineration, so we produce uh, greenhouse gases emissions, and so bio-based plastic can be carbon neutral. Moreover, uh, fossil plastic can also give 
a lot of issues uh, in contact with skin application. Here we can see examples of dermatitis or uh, allergies that can be due to the use of adsorbent and hygiene products, AHP, or cosmetics that can uh, be uh, not good, not biocompatible with skin. So uh, polybioskin is going to address these, uh, uh, these issues. Uh, producing uh, a, a diaper uh, for sanitary applications, uh, a beauty mask for cosmetic application, and a wound dressing in the wound care segment uh, of the market. So the project was a three years project uh, financed by the BBIJU and uh, participated by 12 partners for, from seven countries. Here there is the list of partners participated to the uh, project. Uh, so next, uh, please. Uh, what biopolymers we want to consider? Mm, uh, Bio-based uh, polysaccharides, for example, like chitin, pululan, starch, and cellulose, but also uh, polylactic acid and polydroxyalkanoates uh, because they can be processed by extrusion to obtain films or tissues and they are both renewable and biodegradable uh, to obtain uh, fully biobased products. Uh, so go on please. So the functional uh, elements that we added to the uh, products came from the exploitation of uh, chitin uh, mainly because chitin is a, a material that is present, for example, in the exoskeleton of shrimps, and it can be uh, converted, please, um, to uh, chitosan, but also to chitin nanofibrils. Chitin nanofibrils, uh, you can see uh, here in the micrograph, um, are nanostructured uh, uh, fibrils that have the same antimicrobial properties of chitosan, so they can be exploited like a chitosan, but they are uh, solid, so uh, they can be better also to deposit them onto surfaces, for example. Um, the idea was uh, creating a system to uh, entrap the functionalities that are uh, necess ne necessary for uh, the final application we considered to uh, protect uh, these uh, uh, active agents. And so, please, uh, we consider chitin nanofibrils and nanolignin that could be combined into complexes. Uh, so the positively charged chitin nanofibrils can be combined with the negatively charged nanolignin, also adding some uh, molecules that can be active agents to obtain these uh, complexes. Please next. So these complexes, uh, please next, are uh, uh, micrometric but nanostructured because they include the nanofibrils together with nanolignin and uh, eventually the active molecules. They were um, cytocompatible. They show anti-inflammatory activity and they can be also good for delivering the biomolecules they contain. So they are also stable thermally, so they can be applied with different methodologies. Uh, so please, next. We, in this project, we consider some active molecules, such as vitamin E, vitamin C, glyceratinic acid that can be extracted from liquorice plant. And uh, lutein, nicotinamide, we compare these uh, uh, complexes containing these molecules in terms of their thermal stability and cytocompatibility, compatibility with skin cells by in vitro tests. And so we could select the one that could be better for the different application with this methodology. We found, for example, that the glyceratinic acid complex was very good in terms of both stability and uh, compatibility with skin and anti-inflammatory properties. So we, we, we go to see what were the results. For the diaper application, we wanted to validate a fully biodegradable diaper uh, enriched with antimicrobial and antioxidant functionalities to prevent the skin reddening, inflammation. Uh, we consider the back sheet, the top sheet in contact with skin, but also the superabsorbent layer inside. 
and uh, we could produce uh, films as top sheet, please go on, and also the superabsorbent powder, but also uh, a system to incorporate the powder into uh, the adsorbent layer. And then um, in the University of Pisa, we have developed a plasticized uh, PLA PBS blends uh, containing uh, um, a citrate plasticizer that uh, could be used uh, in this uh, application. And it was found that it was more compatible with the skin, of cell, uh, skin cells with respect to LDP, as you can see in the, in the micrograph. Um, you, you can see that the cells are um, repelled by the LDP surface. Um, we exploited the, the uh, technology of nanodispersion of chitin nanofibrils into PLA that we have uh, studied in previous project, NanoKitopak, for example, that was a, a FP7 project. And then, uh, please go on. We, we could, uh, um, please go on. We could uh, obtain, uh, exploit this technology to apply it to our films. Please go on and please go on. <laughs> Sorry. So we, we, we obtained these uh, films with uh, um, uh, chitin nanofibrils. We observed that the films were not antimicrobial, but they are indirectly antimicrobial because they induced the production of defensins from the skin cells. So the antimicrobial effect was not so high. And so we decided for the project to exploit the coating methodologies. Another, so another important issue that we face it, please go on. Uh, uh, yes, we published several papers on the book. Uh, we faced this issue in our plasticized blends. We could see uh, by accelerated test at 60 degrees that our films could uh, lose the plasticizer and this can create uh, uh, some oiliness on the surface. So we studied this uh, issue trying to uh, combine um, and modify the compounds using different uh, additives. In particular, we found that micrometric calcium carbonate reduced significantly the uh, citrate migration, and chitin nanofibrils uh, can uh, um, slow this migration. So uh, it, they can be also useful also to develop uh, uh, mm, new products with uh, uh, modulated uh, release uh, properties. We could also measure the coefficient of diffusion of our films modeling our system. And so this also was important also to solve the issue, issue of oiliness. Then go on, the, the, the technology that was finally selected was the application of water-based suspension of, of the complexes to be applied onto the uh, Biovised films for the top sheet. Looking uh, next, please, to uh, the uh, superabsorbent, this was uh, developed by the um, Armind uh, partner. And so we, we considered carboxymethylated cellulose that was uh, cross-linked by using citric acid to obtain uh, membranes that were uh, ground to obtain a powder. And this powder could be incorporated into the, the prototype. So this work was also published, please go on. This was the publication. So the uh, sanitary prototype was almost 100% biobased with increased compatibility with skin and body, with anti-inflammatory properties, antimicrobial and compostable in industrial plant. Um, another point was the uh, beauty mask. So the beauty mask, please go on, uh, should uh, be innovative. And so we selected for the project uh, a, a pullulant-based uh, tissue that could be obtained by electrospinning that could incorporate the active molecules by dry impregnation. This, uh, um, this beauty mask was the object of a paper, as you can see, and it was also tested on two volunteers. And the, the, the beauty mask showed a very good cosmetic uh, property. So please go on, this is the, the prototype. Um, so it, it was 100% uh, biobased, commercialized dry without preservatives. Preservatives are generally present in the wet masks that are commercialized currently, 
but they give allergies. So dry product can be better in this sense. Um, and then uh, it is also water soluble. So it can be applied on the wet skin and it dissolves. So this, could, uh, this kind of mask was selected because uh, it was thought that this could be advantageous also for the market uh, of a beauty mask. However, uh, we also experimented the other beauty mask uh, uh, strategies. For example, in the University of Pisa, we tried to produce PHA starch films by compression molding or by extrusion followed by compression molding. We used the PHA starch, but in some formulation also PBAT. Uh, and we modeled the uh, morphology of our different uh, uh, beauty mask, considering their release capacity also. And so we found, for example, that the compression molded one that was the uh, most uh, inhomogeneous was the best in releasing the starch on the, on the skin. Then the next, uh, by applying on this beauty mask a coating in which cutting nanofibrils, the complexes with vitamin E were included, we could find different behavior in the release of these films. So uh, the compression molded and the one without uh, uh, PBAT uh, could release well, but the one with PBAT not. So it means that the coating could cover and be uh, strongly adhesive on it, uh, inhibiting the release. So we could modulate the releasing uh, behavior thanks to uh, the composition and the coating. This can be exploited also in other products in the future. Please go on. There is the uh, bound dressing. Uh, please go on. And here, uh, a chitosan tissue with a, a PHA electrospoon on it and including the active agent by dry powder impregnation was adopted. And this tissue was uh, applied onto PLA. So it was completely biobased, uh, compatible with skin and body, anti-inflammatory, antimicrobial, and compostable in industrial plants. Uh, we also analyzed the situation of the end of life. So the current scenario for AHP um, considered top sheet in polyethylene or uh, non-woven top sheet in fossil uh, mixed with uh, natural fibers. Um, and the superabsorbent is uh, um, sodium polyacrylate. So uh, um, we, we know that uh, after polybioskin, I think one year after, there was the Embraced uh, project that was uh, a BBIJU project too. And this project was also participated by Procter & Gamble, Fater and Novamont, and was assessed at the, um, considering the recycling of the diaper, the current diaper with the polyethylene. So they found a methodology to recycle the superabsorbent inside the diaper, the um, plastic part by making cups uh, with the polyethylene and also the cellulose. So I think that anyway, the technology developed by polybioskin can be integrated with this technology. Uh, in this case, we could recover bioplastics, not polyethylene, but in a future scenario where bioplastic could replace the fossil ones, this kind of recycling opportunities can be also exploited. Um, another point uh, is gone, so the, the polybioskin scenario, please go on, is the one related to applying also this uh, kind of integration with other projects. Moreover, regarding the beauty mask, uh, currently, there are uh, cotton and fossil fibers based uh, beauty mask that go to landfill mainly, but we developed a water soluble polysaccharide beauty mask. Uh, so uh, we can have also the compostability, can be very positive. And regarding the um, bound dressing, currently they are made with polyurethane, with uh, natural polymers, but also silicon adhesive. Uh, uh, and also silver used as antimicrobial instead of uh, cutting nanofibrils of the uh, biopolymers. And this uh, go to landfill or incineration. So this, our chitos and PHA PLA alternative can, can, be, uh, can go to composting or anaerobic digestion that, that can be an, a good improvement. 
So uh, this uh, Polybaskin uh, project was cited also in the success stories of BBIJU, and um, it was finished in 2020. So please go on. Currently, we try to, to go on with some researches that could improve uh, more uh, these research lines, for example, considering kiting from mushrooms, uh, in the framework of the Ecofunco project that will be presented after, and then kiting from insects, collaborating with groups uh, in Italy that are producing this kind of uh, uh, kiting. Um, considering alternative sources for molecules such as aromatic plants as nut shell powders, but also bust plants. Um, and so we try to go on with the new ideas to improve these sectors. Thank you for your attention. I'm ready for questions if they are. Thank you, Maria Beatrice. It's very interesting how a project is flowing into another and then uh, maybe uh, taking there off uh, other ideas. So, so this is a very interesting spin off. Any question from the room? No one is into cosmetics, Karina. <laughs> Question if these products are uh, cost competitive to the commercial ones, or did you calculate anything? Uh, in designing the new products, we consider to use a PLA uh, in the diaper application where the uh, dimension of the market is huge, yeah. whereas PHA in the uh, beauty mask and in the round dressing application because it is more expensive and the availability is also inferior. And the, the, the question of cost um, uh, is more critical. The, the, the market analysis of the project at the end um, considered that the, the issue is more in the diaper sector, uh, but uh, in the cosmetic sector and in the wound dressing sector, uh, consumers are generally green-minded and open to these alternatives, especially if they understand that uh, um, these new materials are also more healthy because uh, the, the demonstration of the project went in this direction. So this can also um, um, offer the possibility to increase the price uh, uh, for niche products at the beginning, but also going on uh, in a, with a market that, that can increase. The cosmetics market is increasing a lot also mm -hmm. currently. Yeah, but for, for, for the diapers, it's uh, extremely important and interesting. And I guess you yes. have uh, big players here involved. That... <laughs> An important uh, um, aspect that we don't uh, consider because uh, I need to, to summarize much was that um, for the super absorbent, a recycled paper was used as a raw material also to decrease the price and have a competitive one. The properties were not so much dissimilar from sodium polyacrylate. Mm -hmm. So this also could uh, help in reducing the cost. Uh, we know that PLA is more expensive than PE, but uh, the company that participated were interested and wanted to exploit this uh, possibilities uh, and uh, so I think that they were the main uh, the main stakeholders but also the stakeholders in the advisory board were interested in these applications mm -hmm. for example for future developments also I think upscaling upscaling yes so thanks a lot very interesting <laughs> thanks <laughs>